Hello everyone, welcome to The Nerdy Novelist. Today in this video we're going to be talking about the different tools that I use for AI and what I recommend you use if you want to use AI in your writing specifically for fiction. There are literally dozens, possibly hundreds of AI tools for writing nonfiction, especially things like marketing copy and things like that. But that's another video, I'm not going to get into that. There are far fewer options for writing fiction. And we're going to go t talking a little bit about some of the tools that I recommend and the tool that I use and why I use it. So there's really only just four options, kind of three, but you know, we're going to talk about them like there's four. And so let's just dive into it. The first one on this list is Pseudowrite. Okay. So Pseudowrite is a fantastic program. It was one of the first on the scene when it comes to fiction writing with AI. They've been around for a while, at least a while in terms of uh, the fast developing world of AI. And I wrote a review about Pseudowrite recently for Kindlepreneur. You can go check that out. I'll have a link in the description of this video. But overall, it is a fantastic tool. The thing about Pseudowrite is that it has a lot of bells and whistles. Okay, so you can go here to brainstorm, for example, and there's just all kinds of different things that you can brainstorm. I do find the brainstorming to be a little bit simplistic compared to some of the tools we'll look at later, but it you can basically figure out anything. And then they have a whole bunch of other things that are really useful. For instance, if I highlight this and um, I can describe it, I can also click uh, I can also click rewrite here and say I want to make it show more than not tell. That's a really great option here. There's all sorts of things you can do with Pseudowrite. And if you want a AI tool that is specifically geared for fiction, this is probably one of the best places to go. I know they recently got access to GPT-4 in their API, and so I don't know if they've implemented that yet, but I assume they will be at least in the near future which will make the output even better. And one of the issues I have with Pseudowrite, and it's not really an issue per se, because it's absolutely expected, is their pricing. Now their pricing is fine. Uh, for $20 a month, you get 90,000 words. However, I found that if you write regularly, it's very easy to burn through those thousand words, those 90,000 words. And, um, and so I prefer personally things that are unlimited or maybe I have a lifetime deal or anything like that. There isn't a whole lot of that in the AI writing space, admittedly. Um, but this is absolutely a reasonable price for the amount of words you get. Just understand that you might run out of words. Um, and that can always be a bummer. And remember that you're ideally, you sometimes you need to run the AI multiple times to get the exact words you want. And so having a limit on your words, in my opinion, kind of stunts your creativity. It keeps you from reiterating and trying things over and over again. And so that's why I'm a little hesitant to use Pseudowrite for my own personal practice uh, when there are others. But it is absolutely a fantastic tool. Another reason you might want to use Pseudowrite is that there is no filter on Pseudowrite, which means you can write really violent scenes, you can write sexual scenes, which a lot of the other tools might not let you do. So if that's you, if you're an erotica writer or you write anything that's a little bit more graphic, uh, Pseudowrite is definitely the one you want to look at. The second one we're going to look at is called Verb. Now Verb is actually a relatively new tool and because of that it is currently free because it is an open beta. So definitely you can check that out. Again, a link into the description. But with Verb, um, it works very similarly to Pseudowrite in some senses, but in others, it is very, very different. For instance, in Pseudowrite, we'll just take a look at what you can do here. You can take a blank canvas and then say generate a first draft, then write a summary here, and it will generate a pretty lengthy first draft of what you input. And then it'll just have that whole thing there and then you can start from there and start editing it out. With verb, it's a little bit more linear. So you start by saying whatever you want to start with. So Alice finds a 
portal to another universe under the roots of a tree, okay? And it'll give you a, like between 100 and 200 words, roughly. And the output in verb is pretty good. And I will say the output for all of these is pretty good. And that's just more dependent on the models that they're using more than the tool themselves. And so that's going to continue to get better no matter which tool you use. Uh, but this is pretty good. So we have this and then at the end of the portal, she finds a bunny who can talk, right? Let that go and it continues where it left off. And so you can feed it just little bits at a time. And this is actually, I think, a really good tool for discovery writers for this reason is because you can kind of take it little bit by little bit and decide where it's going from there. And then you can fix it up if you want to edit things that it just wrote or try it again, you could rerun the prompt. And so verb is one of my personal favorites. I wrote a short story with verb and it works really well. And if this type of writing where you don't do it all at once and you're just working on a little bit by a bit, little bit, if that appeals to you, then this might be one to check out. And like I said, it's currently free. So there's absolutely nothing stopping you to figure to, to check it out and look at it. That's verb. Okay, the next one that I'm going to recommend to you is called Playground.ai, or the OpenAI Playground, basically. This is essentially the same thing as ChatGPT. It's just through the OpenAI Playground. I have a link where you can find that. But this essentially functions a lot like ChatGPT. It has one advantage over ChatGPT and one disadvantage compared to ChatGPT. And that is, the, well, we'll talk about the advantage first. The advantage is that it can read what you have uh, edited in the past. So, for instance, if you're working with ChatGPT, you give it a prompt, it gives you an output. You have no way of editing that output within the actual text, at least not yet. Maybe that'll be something that comes out in the future. Um, but basically, the output it gives you, it's what it gives you and you can't edit it within the window with playground you can so let's just say write a character description for for a dynamic character and include a name all right if we hit submit it gives us a little bit of an out, output here which is very similar to what ChatGPT gives us And okay, so this looks good. Now, let's say we wanted to edit something about this. Let's say we don't really like the name Iris. We want her name changed to Alice, just to use the one I was using earlier. So let's go through here and find, okay, here's the name again. And we just edit this up and you can edit this however you want, but just for the proof of concept, I'm gonna change her name to Alice here. Then we come here and we're going to write what are her favorite pastimes and hit submit. And here you can see it is using the name Alice instead of Iris, which it did originally. So it can see what you have written and it can incorporate that into what it writes next. So that is really useful if you are editing as you go and you want it to understand your edits <laughs> as well as the output it gave you. Um, the downside to this is that you can only do it so, so far. Um, currently within the playground, you have a limited number of tokens. You can only get it to a certain number of words before you have to either start taking things out or it won't continue producing words for you. Uh, that may change. Uh, currently, you are only able to use chat, you know, the technology behind GPT-3 in Playground. So GPT-4 is not yet here yet for most people. There are also a number of tools and things you can tweak. So I know a lot of authors that love to do their writing here in OpenAI Playground because of that. Here's the big downside. In addition to not having GPT-4 yet, although I anticipate that will be here anytime, the big downside I see to this is that you have to pay as you go. Now, granted, the cost is very minuscule compared to some tools, okay? 
but you do have to pay as you go, which means the more you write, the more you're going to have to pay. And again, just for myself, I I feel like it, that stunts my growth when I am trying to write because I don't want to continue iterating and optimizing and figuring out things, better ways to do things if I know that there is a cap or that I'm paying for every time that I use that um, that tool. And so that's the only downside I see to it. Otherwise, this is a great way to go. It's very inexpensive, even though it does cost as you go. And once they have GPT-4 incorporated into it, I imagine it'll be really good and possibly the better way to go. But until that happens, I'd say uh, maybe give this one a break for now. That leads us to our last one, which you might have guessed is ChatGPT. Specifically, ChatGPT+. Plus. Now, ChatGPT+, Plus does cost. It's $20, $20 a month, which, if you recall, is the same as that middle range of Pseudowrite. But unlike Pseudowrite, there is no cap on how many words you get, which means you can keep trying things, brainstorming, just conversing with the AI however you like. There are, of course, some downsides to ChatGPT, and the most, and the, probably the biggest one, as I already mentioned, is that you cannot edit the content within the browser. Now, as I'm recording this, they just announced that there's going to be plugin integration with ChatGPT, and so I wouldn't be surprised if eventually there is some plugin that will allow you to edit the content and then continue on from there, which would be phenomenal. Just the fact that they're coming out with those plugins is going to be a huge game changer, but that's another discussion. My point with this is, ChatGPT is a very inexpensive way to have what is essentially unlimited words. And that is why ChatGPT is my number one recommendation for authors who want to write fiction, because since the advent of GPT-4, it is good enough for that. Now, back when we were working with GPT 3.5 here, it was okay, but it still required a lot of work to make it readable, you know, to make it so I felt comfortable publishing those words, you know. With GPT 4, it still requires work to get it to the point where I'm comfortable publishing it, but much less work than it used to. And it actually gives me a lot. And very often the stuff I have to edit isn't a fault of the AI. It's a fault of me for not being more specific in my prompting. Another thing I like about ChatGPT is the ability to go back and forth on things, especially during things like the brainstorming stage. You really need to have that sort of bouncing ideas off of each other feel it's very much like having a co-writer in the room that you can talk to and bounce ideas off of. And that is something that's kind of unique to ChatGPT that most of the other tools aren't really great at, even if they are built for fiction. ChatGPT is not built specifically for fiction. It's built for basically anything word-related. But it does a pretty good job on fiction, especially when you're really good at getting your basic parameters. And that's the other thing about ChatGPT is that it does require a little bit more work to understand it and understand how to get good with it. It's almost a skill. In fact, it is a skill on working with ChatGPT. And you will find that you will get better at it as you go. And you will be able to create higher and better quality output, not because the tool got better, but because you got better at prompting it. And that's one of my goals with this channel is to help people get to that point. And so for that reason, this channel focuses entirely on writing fiction within ChatGPT. Now that might change in the future. I might decide that there is another tool that is actually better. But for now, where we are right now, since the advent of GPT-4, I really think ChatGPT is the best way to go. It's inexpensive. It's um, generally very versatile. It can do many things. And I just find it to be everything I need. Some of the other tools might be better at holding your hand through the process and kind of walking you through things. But if you want to really develop your AI skills, ChatGPT is definitely the way to go. And I have no doubt, just given the trajectory that, that we're going with, 
with all of this new AI news. Every week there's some new major announcement about AI. ChatGPT seems to be at the forefront of it and OpenAI in general. And so I would stay close to them, honestly, if I want to succeed as an AI fiction writer. Uh, if I want to get better at that, I do think that some of the best and coolest toys are going to be coming through this channel. And so those are my thoughts on which fiction writing software that you should use if you're choosing to write with AI. ChatGPT is what I go with. And if you saw my last video, you can learn a little bit more about what that process looks like. And so, yeah. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.